Hey everyone, it's Tony with Hidden Light Photography. And one of our community members, Paul, brought up a very interesting scenario. And that is, Star Exterminator sometimes pulls structure with the star's image. And I think that's a very good topic to cover, and that's what we're going to go over today. Fortunately, there's a couple of workarounds to prevent that from happening. So if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button. I don't want you to miss out on any valuable information. Thank you, Paul, for that amazing topic. Now let's jump into PixInsight and learn how to work around Star Exterminator pulling structure with the star's image. Most of us, if not all of us, have been there at some point. We use Star Exterminator, whether it be from my Star Console script or using Star Exterminator standalone, we remove the stars and we end up pulling some structure with them. This generally happens from heavy brightness drop-offs that can sometimes confuse the AI into thinking that those are stars. Fortunately, there's a couple of workarounds in order to resolve this, and I'm gonna show you those right now. With M31, we have a bright core, and this core is what confuses the AI sometimes. So if we go into Star Exterminator, and we go ahead and run it, what we find is that, as you just saw, the core comes along with the stars. Now, in certain scenarios such as this, the workaround is extremely easy. If we enable large overlap and then rerun Star Exterminator, sometimes we find ourselves with a much cleaner stars image. Now, keep in mind, using large overlap can add a little bit of extra time to the runtime of Star Exterminator, but as you can see, we're no longer pulling the core. Now, there are extreme cases, such as M42, where you have an extremely bright core. So, whether or not you run large overlap, which we'll do right now, you'll find that the core still wants to come along with the stars. And that's because of how overly bright the core of M42 is. And there's some other targets that have extremely bright areas that just cannot be resolved by using large overlap. And I'm going to show you a workaround for that. Now again, using large overlap can take a little bit of extra time. And in most cases, that'll resolve your issue. But again, in extreme cases, such as M42 here, when we get the stars image, we find that the core still wants to come along with them. So the workaround for this, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna start with our image, ready to have the stars pulled out. We're going to clone it. We're gonna go ahead and remove the stars. I'm just gonna disable large overlap uh, to save on some runtime. And as you saw, it doesn't really matter if we use large overlap or not. And what we're doing is we're going to generate a starless image that we're gonna use in order to generate a mask for the core. Since we're not gonna be using these stars, I'm just going to close out of them and then what we're gonna do is create a mask for our core. For the time being, I'm just gonna exit out of Star Exterminator and I'm gonna go to Process All Processes. I'm gonna come down to Range Selection. Now, in Range Selection, I'm going to open up a preview and we're gonna be left with a white screen. Now, we're working with linear data so range selection is gonna behave a little bit differently. I'm gonna show you a little bit of a workaround later on. What we're going to adjust first is lower limit. We're just gonna barely move it and we're looking for just the brightest area. Right about over here is good. Now, from here, what I would normally do is adjust the smoothness. Again, we're working with linear data. If I adjust the smoothness, you're gonna see some goofy behavior. I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is accept the mask as it is, exit out of the preview, 
And then I'm going to redo range selection with our newly created mask. I'm going to open up a new preview. And now when I adjust smoothness, we'll see different behavior here. This is what we're looking for. All that I'm trying to do is just get rid of the sharp edges that we see here and just smooth it out a little bit. I'm going to accept that, exit out of the preview, exit out of the original mask, and I'm left with the newly created smooth mask. I'm going to exit out of range selection. I'm just gonna minimize our starless image for the time being. I'm gonna take my stars image or my, my image with the stars in it, I should say, clone it. I'm going to minimize my original. And then I'm gonna go ahead and apply my mask to the image with the stars. I'm going to minimize my mask and here's what we're left with. Now, when you're working with the mask, what you're looking for is the core to be white, the rest to be red. Now, the red is what the mask is protecting. On the flip side, if you apply the mask and you see that the core is red, that means that the mask is protecting the core. We don't want that. Control Shift I will invert the mask. So make sure that you invert the mask until everything else is red and the core is white. Control K will hide the mask. Now, one other very important item to consider is if you take a look at the image name tab on the left, notice how it's brown. That means that the mask is applied. If you apply the mask and the tab is gray, as you see here, the mask is not applied. If you applied the mask and that tab is gray, Control Shift M will enable or disable the mask. So as long as the tab is brown and the mask is protecting everything except for the core, meaning everything else is red and the core is white, then you're good to go. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to knock down the core. If we go to process all processes and come down to HDR multi-scale transform, we're gonna use this in order to knock down the core. Now, this part is gonna be a little bit of uh, a play on settings. Find what works best for your data. I found on this particular data set, number of layers nine, number of iterations nine, works just fine. This can take a little while to run because we're doing a lot of iterations. This works differently with linear data than what it does on stretch data. So what we're gonna do is play with your settings, see what works best. You can try to intensity, you can try to lightness, whichever works best with your data set. We're gonna go ahead and apply this. And what it's gonna do is focus primarily on the core, since we have the mask protecting everything else and it's going to knock down the brightness of that core. So I'm gonna let this run, it'll be a little bit, and I'm gonna bring you back as soon as it's done. So now we have our core knocked down, and if we zoom in, we can see some of the other stars appearing. Now I'm going to exit out of HDR multi-scale transform, and one other thing that we can do to kind of help clean this up and ensure that we don't pull anything that we don't want to pull. First, I'm going to disable my mask, control shift M. I'm going to go into process all processes and I'm going to go into clone stamp. I'm going to click somewhere in the image in the core, hold control, click, and then you'll see that we have our clone stamp ready to go. But I wanna enlarge the circle that we're gonna be using. So I'm gonna to go to radius and see what 20 does. And it looks pretty good here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start cleaning this up just a little bit. I know it looks scary, but trust the process. 
Uh, we're just going to get rid of any additional bright areas in here. And once we are done cleaning this up, make sure you don't hit any other stars. But once we're done cleaning this up, we're going to go ahead and pull the stars again. So that looks pretty decent. I'm just going to go and well, let me clean up these little dots. Hit the green check mark. That's going to apply what we just did with Clone Stamp. We're going to exit out of Clone Stamp. Go back into Process All Processes and come down to Star Exterminator. We'll use Large Overlap, Triangle, Drag and Drop. And then we're going to let Star Exterminator do its thing again. And if we did this right, we'll have a much cleaner Stars image. And then we'll move on to the next step. Once we confirm that we were able to knock the brightness of the core down enough to not pull it out with the Stars. Again, be patient with this process. Finding the right settings for your data set in HDR Multiscale Transform um, can take a little bit of time, as well as running large overlap on Star Exterminator, depending on the capabilities of your computer. But as we can see here, we pulled the stars nice and clean. So now this would be the stars image that we use. So we would minimize this for further processing. We don't need this image here anymore, so we're going to exit out of that. We have our uh, starless image of M42, so we would use this starless image to continue processing, and then we would use this stars image here to continue processing with the stars. Now, sometimes uh, you'll run into a scenario where range selection isn't cooperating too well. And what I mean by that, if we were to bring out M31 again, and let's exit out of Star Exterminator, we'll exit out of the mask that we created, we'll go into Process All Processes, and we'll come down to Range Selection. Let's reset, open a preview, and you just barely move lower limit. Just barely move it. And we know right out the gate that this isn't gonna fully cover the core. So we need a little bit more accuracy with range selection. One little workaround that you could do is clone your starless image, and then we'll go into, for example, SETI Astro's statistical stretch, and we'll just do a, uh, we wanna make sure that we can isolate, so make sure it looks good as far as the stretch goes. We'll just accept this for example. And then we use the stretched image in range selection as that'll give us a much better, more accurate way to isolate that core. And then we can create our mask based off of this. We'll create our mask. We don't need our stretched image anymore for the time being. And then we can go ahead and apply our new mask onto the image that we're gonna be using. And that would be in cases where range selection just doesn't wanna cooperate with your linear data. So I hope you found this video useful. And if you did and wanna help support the channel, check out that join button and consider joining a Hidden Light Photography membership. There's lots of perks in it for you and your support helps me bring you more tips and tricks. Another way you can help support the channel is checking out my High Point Scientific Affiliate link located in the description of this video here if you're in the market for some new gear. Also, do me a favor. That channel icon that popped up? Hit that channel icon and subscribe. I don't want you to miss out on any helpful information. Drop a comment in the comment section. Have you run into this scenario before? If so, what did you do to work around it? And then, check out that next video. Until the next time, clear skies.